So we just had Sony's briefing with investors and they talked all about how the really the divisions are all doing pretty well, minus mobile, we'll talk about that a bit. But there is this really big surprising thing that just happened. It looks like Kaz Harai is actually stepping down as CEO, something that really caught investors, pretty much everyone, analysts, everyone off guard. And no one was expecting him to step down. But in a way, if you look at everything, it seems like he's pretty much completed what he set out to do in 2012 when he was appointed as the CEO. Now, back in 2012, when Harai was appointed as the CEO of Sony, he was tasked with a pretty tall order. He had to take Sony, who in 2012, was on the verge of collapse, bankruptcy, selling off tons of their IPs, assets, everything, just to stay afloat. He took their divisions and actually turned them into what they are today, which is profitable and manageable. That was the big thing. He really wanted to make the company leaner and function more efficiently, which he did. He, if you remember correctly, he took the Sony Vio line, which was a laptop and desktop line, and pretty much got rid of them. That, that was really hurting them big time back then and he just got rid of them. Him and the CFO at the time, Yoshida, who's actually taking over uh, his position, which we'll get to soon as well, kind of set out and they wanted to figure out what does Sony do well. Now, of course, the PlayStation 3 hurt them badly. That was an expense that they really could not take on at the time, but they took it on anyway, and it led to where they were in 2012, where articles are actually being written about the concern around Sony going away. So he took that, got rid of the VIO line, cut down the workforce, and then put a big emphasis on gaming, and he put a big emphasis on their semiconductor image line. So what they do is they make, of course, the image sensors for cameras. You probably know about Sony DSLRs, mirrorless cameras. If, if you're into film, you probably own one even, right? You're all, you're, you're really into those. But the big thing they do is they provide image sensors for iPhones, which is very, very big for them. It's a very big part of their business. They, I mean, you buy an iPhone, there are Sony image, there's a Sony image sensor in there. They provide them to Apple and a lot of iPhones sell. So that's really helped them. They've actually made quite a bit of money from that at this time and really helped to kind of get them on the right path. And then of course, in 2013, he was there when the PS4 really launched and just took off. It was just, it was off, right? Their, their online networking business has done really well with games where they continue to gain more and more subscribers to their PlayStation Plus service, PlayStation Network, and they've turned in record profits at this point for themselves compared to what they were doing back in 2012. 70% up at this point in profit from last fiscal quarter, last year. So they are, they are off and running with the PlayStation division. Now, the one division that he kept around that had, I mean, it's, it's hurt them up until this point. And honestly, when I saw these balance sheets, I was a little surprised because their film division has always seemed to lose money. It's never been good. In fact, a lot of people wanted him to sell it off, but that's the one, that's the one division he never really wanted to get rid of. He went as far as to say, I'm not putting a for sale sign on the water tower for, for Sony film. And believe it or not, this past fiscal quarter, they actually made money. I, I couldn't believe it. They turned a profit, and believe it or not, a lot of that had to do with their Jumanji movie that happened across 840 million recently at the box office. I couldn't believe it either. So that movie, along with a few other things, but that movie in particular, really helped them turn over $90 million in profit for their film division. And I kind of see why Kaz Harai may just be done at this point. I mean, six years as a CEO of a company like that, that, I mean, seriously leaned on him. They really needed him. He put a lot into that. And I can kind of understand why you might be like, you know what, six years as a CEO of a company that puts that much stress and that much responsibility on you probably feels like, like there's like, like 15 to 20 years at a normal desk job. You're, I mean, you are constantly being beaten on stress. He was probably ready. I mean, he's getting, he's, I think he's like 57, 58 now. He's a little older he's probably thinking more along the lines of you know what i'm probably moving to retirement soon ish and i'm ready to move on and move this to somebody who is maybe hungrier at this point point. it seems like the cfo yoshida may be a little hungrier because he's used to to cutting stuff down he is used to uh trimming the fat if you will it was his responsibility after they figure out a plan to cut the bio line pretty much get rid of it sell it off uh, and it was his responsibility to cut the workforce, things that he had no problem doing. Basically, if you're at your office and you hear Yoshida's coming around, you get a little worried because you might be leaving the office with, uh, with your stuff in a box. That's kind of the mentality there. He has no problem doing that. And him running the company means he has more control over that, at least before he was answering at this point to Harai, who again, wanted to keep that film division. I think if Yoshida was in charge, that film division would have been gone a while ago. He would have cut that right out 
Eddie still might. So keep that in mind. The big thing that I see a lot of people concerned about right now is he may interfere or do something to the gaming division. Now, the gaming division is interesting because it actually makes them quite a bit of money. It's not like how people theorize, because Microsoft won't really give us numbers, separate numbers, people theorize that Microsoft is losing money on the Xbox completely, but they, of course, pair it with their Windows program and their gaming division overall, and it shows that it barely makes a little bit of money. And a lot of people are concerned, but PlayStation is a little different. They actually make a good bit of money on their PlayStation division. So I don't think Yoshida is going to really mess with it too much. He already said, I have a plan that's pretty much going to coincide with what's been happening with Harai. I'm going to pretty much follow Kaz Harai's example right now, just in a different way is what he said. <laughs> different expression, which could mean... I'm gonna to look to cut things out and, and try to make us more profitable by getting rid of more expenses rather than trying to build up more revenue. But the PlayStation brand managed to ship another 9 million units during this past fiscal quarter, and they made a profit of over 700 million on their PlayStation brand, so that's in good shape. If anything, if, if you're concerned about the gaming division, don't really be concerned about it until the PS5 comes around, because that's when Yoshida will be in full control of all decisions with the PlayStation brand. Because right now, I think he's gonna kinda coast on autopilot with this, and kinda let it evolve on his own, and it seems like the PS5 may be more in his vision how he wants to do that. How does it all unfold? I don't know. No one knows. And that's why I think a lot of people are concerned. The one good thing I can tell you, though, is Yoshida is being left with a business, a company that is much healthier than it was when Kaz took over back in 2012. I mean, think about it. Back in 2012, they were in some trouble. In fact, from 2012 to 2018, the six-year, really 10-year that, that Kaz Rai has, has served here as CEO, they have taken really the, the stock value that investors had back then and increased it by 226% to now. So investors are very happy with what they've done, and that's why a lot of people are concerned. The man that has done that for them is moving into a more uh, adversary. He he's gonna be advising, okay? So he's gonna be a chairman that's gonna advise to Yoshida, but not technically call the shots. So. What happens now, I'm not sure. But right now, Sony is in a good place. If they can figure out their mobile division and keep their film division profitable, they will be good across the board. And that's great. You know, because the problem they have now is Google, Facebook, Microsoft, uh, think about Amazon even, they're all becoming technology companies, which means they're gonna be competing more and more with Sony. Sony knows that, but Sony, is significantly smaller than them. Their market capitalization is like 60 something, whereas, you know, Amazon, Google, they're in like the six to 800 billion range. So it's it's a big difference from 60 billion to, to six to 800 billion. So they have an uphill battle still because they want to compete with them, but we'll see. Either way, it's gonna be interesting. April 1st, Kaz Harai is stepping down. And then of course the successor uh, CFO Yoshida is stepping in. So I guess we'll see what happens there. Guys, thank you for watching. Leave a bunch of comments down below what you think about this situation with, well, who seems to be the, the most influential, probably the, the best person for the job stepping down. And Andrew House also is pretty much gone, you know, falling back into, into his, I guess even in being an advisor as well and leaving, I think at the end of this year. Uh, what do you think about all of this? I mean, Sony seems to be undergoing a pretty significant change in the management role, so this could either be good or bad. It's hard to say, but I need to hear your guys' thoughts. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.